And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78:25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, I'm doing a special program. My husband, Mike, his grandmother, Grandma Roberts was her name, was just this precious, sweet lady. And she was Croatian in heritage, and she made this dish called pasties. And she made them uh, one time when, when we lived in Michigan. She lived in Michigan, and she made them for us when we went to visit her. And I just fell in love with them, and she showed me how she did it, and, and uh, it was just a, a precious, precious thing for her to do, to share that with me. And I want to honor her. She's been dead now for several years, but this is her dish. This is Grandma Robert's pasties, and we're going to make those. To serve alongside that, we're going to do a mocha coffee-flavored frosted brownie. Mm, scrumptious. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I have in this pot some potatoes. Now, I'm using Yukon Gold potatoes. Grandma didn't use those. She just used regular russet potatoes. But I'm using the Yukon Golds. And you want to dice them, and I'm going to hold these up here so you can see them, um, about, you know, one inch dice, peel them if you want to. Uh, she did, so I am, but you don't have to if you don't want to. But peel them and cut them into like one inch dice, and that's what I'm going to do here. I saved one to do with you, and uh, we're going to make these in honor of her. She was just the sweetest lady. And you know, I talk often about how that food is memory. So often, we associate food with memories, a certain smell of a food or, you know, a certain, in this particular case, a certain dish will remind us of someone. The last time that I ever cooked for Grandma, she was here visiting. And Mary, my mother-in-law, had brought her to the house. We were there doing some things. And, and I did not know she was coming. But they pulled up, and I went outside, and I said, Oh, Grandma, you picked the best day to come. I'm making pasties. And I'll never forget it, because she clapped her little hands, and she stayed to eat with us. They weren't planning on staying, but they ended up staying. And so this dish is very special to me, because it was, you know, it's her dish. I've kind of modified it to make it a little easier but it's her dish. So we're gonna let these come to a boil and we're gonna cook them until they are just tender. You don't wanna overcook them because they are gonna also bake in the oven. I'm gonna put the lid on until it comes to a boil and then I'm gonna take that lid off. Now in this skillet, I have about two pounds, let me get the other little spatula here, of ground round. Now I'm using ground round today. You would not wanna use anything fatter than ground chuck. You could go with chuck, which is 28% or 20% fat, 80% lean, or you could go with round. Now, the reason I went with ground round today, oddly enough, at my store, the ground round was on sale cheaper than the ground chuck. So that's what we're doing. We're using, we're using the ground round. You want about two pounds total. This is just a, just a little bit over two pounds, but that's okay, because you know what? When I make this dish, and I know you do it at home too, after I get all the filling together, if there's any left over, I eat it. I just love it. It's just so good. So that's okay. If there's a little left over, I'll eat it. It's not a problem. You want to brown the ground beef. Just kind of get it uh, browned off here. Let's see my skillet. Yeah, there we go. We're getting warm. And we're gonna make uh, a filling to go in now. What a pasty is, historically, miners uh, in, in, in the Croatian overseas, in the Croatia area, the, the, the Slavic countries, the, the women would make for their husbands to take for their lunch these pasties. And it's a pastry that you fold over and you fill it with 
a number of different things. I, I, grandma always used beef, but I would imagine you could use chicken, you could use pork, you could use whatever you wanted. And you put that in the, the filling in there and you bake them off and then the mine, you wrap them in paper and the miners would take them as their lunch. And that's the history of this dish is that that's how it started. The women would make it for their coal mining husbands or their iron or ore mining, whatever they did over there. So it's one of those things that's just been passed down from generation to generation. You know, and that brings up a point of one of the, one of the goals of this show is to get you to share your recipes with your family and with your friends. You know, what a shame it would have been if grandma had passed on and not shared this recipe with anybody, not shared, you know, how to make her family's history. Now, this is my husband's family, and, and, and I want to honor that through doing this, but it's important that you pass down to your children and your grandchildren different recipes that show them their heritage, show them what mom cooked or grandmom or their, you know, even on further back. And so it's important that you do this. At home, I have this book. I've been doing it for years. A lot of the recipes uh, that you see here are, are that I do on this show um, are what I call keeper recipes. And at home, I have this book that I have been writing down recipes for years. I test them on my family, and if, if we like it, it goes in the keeper book. And uh, I have this book, and I'm going to have to make another copy because I have two children. And I'm planning on passing that down to my children and my, maybe my daughters-in-law or my sons. Both my sons love to cook. Maybe it'll go to them. I don't know. But um, in any bookstore out there, you can find these blank recipe books. I want to encourage you. What a treasure you could give as a gift to your children or your grandchildren. Your handwritten recipes, please make it in your own handwriting. And, you know, pass that, pass that down to your family. At home, I have my grandmother on my father's side. I have her, some of her recipe cards that she has written in her own handwriting. And let me tell you, I absolutely treasure those cards. They are literally sealed and locked away in a fireproof safe at my house because I don't want anything to happen to them. They just, I treasure them. So these, you know, that's kind of the point of this show is to get these things passed down to your children. Now, while that's browning, I'm going to add just a little bit of salt, probably about a teaspoon because we're going to be using another product that has some salt in it. About a teaspoon. I use kosher salt for cooking and I use um, the fine salt for baking, but in, in the cooking, I like the, the kosher salt. And plenty of freshly cracked pepper. We're just gonna brown this beef off and cook these potatoes, and then we're gonna drain this beef, drain any excess fat that might come off. We're gonna drain that because I don't want that in the final product. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna keep stirring this beef, and when I come back, we're gonna put Grandma Roberts's pasties together. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Psalm chapter 23, verse three says that he restoreth my soul. That is strength to you. That is strength to your inner being, your soul man. Allow God to restore your strength, to restore your soul. You know, the Word tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Are you facing obstacles today? Are you facing things today that just leave you weak need? Will you allow God to restore your soul, to bring back that strength, to allow Him to rise up in you? Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Allow him to restore you and give you your strength today. Drained and uh, it's browned and drained. 
I added about a tablespoon of salt to the water once it came up to a boil for my potatoes to season the potatoes. To the meat mixture, I'm just adding a bag of pre-shredded carrots because it's just easier just to grab the ones that are pre-shredded. If you just want to peel and shred your own carrots, you need about a pound, as much or as little as you like. Uh, just kind of stir those in. Now, Grandma shredded hers on a box shredder, but I'm taking the convenience way. <laughs> mm, I love this stuff. Now, I'm using one package of the dry onion soup mix. You all, you've seen me, we use this a lot on here. I use this a whole lot at home. Just the dry onion soup mix. Make sure you don't get the other flavors, just the onion soup mix is what you want. Kind of stir that in a little bit, and that adds wonderful flavor to it. Mmm, smell it already. I'm going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Now, Grandma did not add Worcestershire, but I like it. So I'm adding just a little bit of, probably about a tablespoon total of Worcestershire. Um, it just adds a, a, a flavor. I don't know how to describe it. it. It makes the beef taste beefier and brings out the flavors of all kinds of different things in there. And that's coming out slow. It's about a tablespoon. You don't have to be exact with that. Stir that all together. Turn your heat down to low because you really just kind of want to keep this warm and soften those carrots just a little bit. Add some more ground pepper because I like pepper. If you don't like that much, don't add that much. That's up to you. And I like it to be just a little moist. I have one can of beef broth. Now, I'm not going to add the whole can. I'm going to start out with about half a cup and see where I end up. You don't want it to be soupy. You don't want it to be real moist um, because you're putting it in a pastry crust and it will, you know, cause the pastry to become real soggy. So you don't want to overdo the beef. Now, let's check our potatoes. I think they're probably going to need a minute more. Yeah, just a couple more minutes. You really just want them to be barely, barely tender. You can take a fork or a knife and insert it to, to check the tenderness. If I was at home, I would be eating one to check for tenderness because that's how I do it because I love potatoes. Love them. Now, let's just set that aside and let's wait till that cooks before we go any further with our beef mixture. Now, what we're going to use, of course, Grandma Roberts made her own pastry dough, and sometimes I do too, because pastry dough, pastry crust, like a pie crust, is not really all that difficult to make. But for convenience sake, now we have these, she didn't have this, we have these wonderful, easy little pie crusts that come in the refrigerated section at the grocery store. So I'm just buying two packages of these. I'm going to grab just a little, little touch of flour to put on my board. Just a little bit of flour because I don't want it to stick. Not too much, just a little bit. Take your pie crust and unroll it. Like that. And just grab your rolling pin. Grab my rolling pin here. Dust your rolling pin with just a little teeny bit of flour. Just kind of smooth that out. You don't really have to worry too much about it because the rolled kind doesn't have the creases in it. And what I do is take a knife and cut it in half. Now, you could, if you wanted to cut it into fourths, you could do that. But what I do is just make, you know, re uh, good sized ones. Well, let me just... We'll put those on there when I get them rolled up. But you could go ahead if you wanted to and make cut it into four and make little smaller appetizer size pasties, which would be a great appetizer. But since I'm serving this as a main dish, I'm just going to cut them in half. Let's check our potatoes. They're probably ready. Most likely, yes. Yeah. So just take the potatoes. And you know what? It's okay if there's a little bit of liquid left on the potatoes because that just helps to moisten the pasties. And we're just going to put these in the middle, or in the middle, in the, in the beef mixture. 
This is really good. Now, I'm, I, I'm kind of a traditionalist with this. I'm with Grandma. I like them just plain. But if you wanted to make, while these are baking, if you wanted to make a little gravy, like a mushroom gravy or a beef gravy of some sort, you could make a gravy to serve alongside these. My husband loves them with ketchup. He likes to put ketchup over it. And that traditionally, a lot of people do eat them that way. I, I just really honestly prefer them plain because that's the way she liked it. And that's the way I learned to eat them. And I'm gonna switch to a spoon spoon. So that's the way I like them. Just stir that all together. You could, and I have made it this way, you could take that pie crust, the bottom, don't cut it in half, put it in the bottom of a pie pan and make one big pie out of it. You can do it that way if you wanted to. But traditionally, it is the little pie shapes. So there you go. Let's get our working station here. Let's turn all the eyes off. And the way that you do this, let me move this so you can see what we're doing here. Just stir that together. I think we may need just a touch more beef broth. Not too much. You don't want it too moist. Oh, this just takes me back so much. Take a spoonful of it. Put it on one half of your pasty mixture. Just like that. You watching? Take the, make sure you leave yourself a border. Get a fork here, a knife. Make yourself a border. Fold it over just like that and seal your edges. Now, the way I do it, and it's okay if it breaks open like that because you're going to cut a hole in it anyway, is to grab a fork. Let me grab a fork and crimp the edges just like this. Just crimp your edges. any cut edge, place it on a lined baking sheet, and then just cut a slit in the top. And obviously I don't have to on this one because it broke apart, that's okay. Transfer it to your, where did my spatula go here? Let me just use the other one, here we go. This is the one I want. Transfer it to a lined baking sheet. I have two baking sheets. That I've lined with parchment paper. We're gonna put this on there and then I'm just gonna finish making up the rest of the pasties. When I come back, I'll show you how to egg wash them, get them in the oven, and then we'll start on our brownies. I'll be right back with you. it on from the Foundation for a Better Life. Our pasties are in the oven, and all I did was crack an egg, mix a little bit of water, beat that up, and brush the tops with the beaten egg mixture. Make sure if your pastry doesn't split, like sometimes they do, and you know, that's okay, uh, that you cut a slit in the top to let the steam escape. They need to bake for about 20, 25 minutes. While they're baking, we're gonna make our brownies, and I'm just using a boxed brownie mix, whatever kind you like. The one I like actually has a little packet of fudge with it. So I'm just gonna, you just follow the package directions on whatever kind of brownie mix that you're making. Some have this little fudge thing, some don't. Whatever you like, and just read the back, and however much of whatever it calls for, that's what you wanna do. Bake them according to the package directions, or your favorite brownie mix. This is one fourth of a cup of vegetable oil, and one fourth of a cup of water, because that's what it called for, and one egg. 
And I'm just putting that in a little bowl here and adding that to my mixture. My son Austin loves brownies and he would eat them every day if we would make them. He loves them and I do too. And you know what? A little trick and the reason we're glazing this with a coffee flavored icing is because coffee makes chocolate taste more chocolatey. So if you have some coffee left over from your morning coffee and you're making this and you want to add, you know, up to a fourth of, you could use your coffee instead of your water. You could use a fourth of a cup of coffee if you wanted to, and that would be delicious. But I'm not. I'm just going to make it with the water and make my glaze. My frosting is coffee flavored. I'm using a uh, eight by eight inch glass pan. Is the one that I just find with brownies, it, it really is better just to bake it in the eight by eight inch size. You want to bake these according to your package directions. This particular one bakes for about 35 minutes at 325 degrees, but whatever that your recipe calls for. Mm. And then you can lick the bowl. If, you, if I was home, Austin would be beating me to that, though. <laughs> he loves to lick the bowl. He's like, Mom, leave some in the bowl for me. Don't put it all in the pan. So that, that would be for Austin, but he's not here. So this needs to bake for about 25 to 35. It just, it just depends on the thickness and all that. Brownies are done when they kind of pull away from the edges and they're still kind of moist looking in the middle. You don't want them dry and hard or then they just, they're not good. Now I have some milk heating on my stove and I'm gonna make the frosting. We're gonna use these little packages of instant coffee cappuccino mixes. There's different brands, there's different kinds. I'm using the Cafe Mocha flavored one, but you use whatever flavor you like. And we want one package of this. And I would say that's about a fourth of a cup. So if you're using the canister that has the instant cappuccino coffee type thing, um, you would want about, I would say that's about a fourth of a cup, and that's how much you would want. We want a fourth of a cup of hot, or half a cup, excuse me, of hot milk. And we're just, really what we're doing is dissolving that. So let's get a whisk. And we just want to dissolve that powder. Mmm. I love those little instant cappuccino packages that you buy after dinner for a little dessert coffee. Delicious. Just kind of keep stirring until you... Now, in a stand mixer, you want one half cup of butter, softened. Please, please, please make sure it's softened. I'm using a teaspoon of vanilla. And I am buy these um, bottles of coffee flavor. You know, in the coffee aisle where you get your coffee, these liquid little coffee flavorings come in all kinds of flavors, whatever kind you like. Uh, just used about two tablespoons or so of that. And we want to mix that up real quick. We're making the frosting for our brownies. Get the butter mixed up, kind of. You could do this in this, with the, the little hand mixer, too. Be fine. Then you want to add your coffee mixture that we made. Stir that in. This is easy. This is an easy little frosting for your little brownies. Now, this is just powdered sugar, one box, which is 16 ounces. And all I'm going to do is slowly, because I don't want to wear it, add the powdered sugar. All of it, the whole box. So we're just going to kind of do this in stages. Adding your powdered sugar about a third of a time, and then beat in what's there until you get it all in there. Okay, now all we did was add the rest of our 
powdered sugar, and look here what we've got. We've got this wonderful, wonderful glaze. Oh, I just love it. And I have to tell you, my cameraman said, I'll lick the bowl. <laughs> I'll do the cleanup for you. So be prepared. You're going to have people wanting to lick your bowls. So here we go. We're just going to pour this. All I did was turn this brownie out onto a cutting, wooden cutting board. And we're just going to smooth that glaze right over the brownie. Oh, look how good that looks. You could add any flavor of that coffee flavoring that you want. Whatever your heart's desire is, is what you need to do. Oh, I just love this. Now, I'm going to add a few little chopped nuts. You don't have to. If you don't want to, you could shave some chocolate. Um, you could sprinkle powdered sugar. You could do whatever you wanted. But I'm going to add just a few little pecans because I like them. And I like nuts in my brownies. But you don't have to if you don't want to. If you have someone with a nut allergy, and actually we do here at the station, you know, make sure you leave them a little piece without it. So you could just serve this on the side if you wanted to. But my piece is going to have some nuts over top. You want to take your brownie. Let me just move this. And we're going to cut it. Use a serrated blade. It's a lot easier. However big you want your piece. It's up to you. Come on, little brownie. Here we go. Oh, yes. Yum, yum, yum. And then cut yourself as big of a brownie as you want. Mm-mm-mm. Get yourself a serving bowl if you have some ice cream. Would be even better. Serve it over some ice cream.